What's up everybody, it's Onglore. Today's video is going to be on the Immortal Discipline for PvP. I'll be covering how I place my points, gearing out, and also your abilities. So, let's jump right into it. First things first, let's open up the Utility Points tree, and I'll show you how I place my points. I place them in Payback, which reduces the cooldown of Unleashed by 30 seconds and causes it to heal you for 10% of your maximum health when used and your unleash is your CC breaker. Unyielding, you generate four rage when stunned, immobilized or put to sleep or knocked around, which is gonna happen to you quite often in PVP. And if you don't like any of these utilities, you can also switch them out for some other useful ones, which may be the deadly reprisal or overwhelm. In the masterful, I take pulled hatred Whenever your movement is impaired, you gain a 10% damage bonus to your next ability that consumes rage. Can stack up to 5 times and last for 15 seconds. And also, Pulled Hatred is going to be getting a nice rework coming in a few weeks. Sonic Wall. When you use Threatening Scream, it protects all your allies within range, excluding yourselves, and it absorbs a moderate amount of damage. I also personally like Unstoppable because when you use Force Charge, it grants this and you gain immunity to, immu Im uh, to movement impairing effects and that pushes you or pull you around for 4 seconds. If you don't like any of these, you can switch them out for something such as Crushing Fist or Unshackling Rage. In the Heroic Tree, I take through Passion, reduces the cooldown of Enraged Defense by 30 seconds which you're going to need in PvP and if you also want to use something else you can also combo it with through power whenever you use, you use enraged uh, defense it increases your movement speed by 50% and grants immunity to movement impairing effects as well also the wh whiplash will no longer be here soon and it will be replaced with hardened defense and for this spec it will grant you 30% less damage when you are stunned. And I'll put what the new passives are somewhere in the video here on the screen somewhere. In the legendary tree, I take through victory. And the reason why I take this is because Mad Dash can be used while immobilized. And it purges movement and impairing effects when activated. And deals 50% more damage. And also the CD is reduced by 10 seconds. And one of the biggest reasons why I like it is you're going to be rooted pretty often and especially let's say versus a sniper where you, they can root you and then they'll cast their big ability you can just wait till it's almost cast it pop your mad dash breaks it negates everything it's pretty cool I no longer take the piercing chill due to the 60% hit in the face reduction so I don't think it's worthy at all anymore okay I also take Throne Gauntlet. What that does is reduces the cooldown of Force Push and Intimidating Roar by 15 seconds. Additionally, it reduces the cooldown of Intercede by 5 seconds and reduces the threat and damage taken by an additional 10%. So, if you're running with a, a healer, it's very good to take that. And also, as we were just talking about, if you run with a healer, I will combo it with Reckoning. So, if you want to switch around a couple of points, you can. I recommend taking either these two or if you really want an extending roar and the reason why I would take these two if I'm running with a dedicated healer or in 4v4s is because most of the time whoever you're going against if they're a smart team they're going to be attacking your healer so you want to keep them alive as long as possible so now I'm going to talk about gearing out when it comes to pvp tanking there's a couple ways you can do this and I have all three versions set up myself for my various tanks. Now, if you're the casual PvPer that doesn't really want to put a lot of effort into the gear, all you have to do is just simply walk into the war zone with the gear you have on. Now, another method which I use on this guy is I replaced all of my mods with DPS mods. My off and main hand are replaced with DPS hilt and armoring now my guardian who is kind of a skank tank pvp you know tank 
is uh, geared with all DPS mods. Same thing with the minion offhand, DPS, but the enhancements are switched with the critical enhancements. Because when you are in the Immortal Discipline, as you can see, your accuracy is already going to be where it needs to be. So you don't need to put any accuracy in it, nor do you need the alacrity. And that setup works really good because when you hit somebody, it hurts, especially with like your crushing blow. You can hit anywhere from 22 to like 26. I sometimes I've seen 28k hits. So you still have some mitigation going, but you can also throw that guard out there and does a little bit more protection. So those are the options that I use for all my tanks and you can find out which setup you like and works for you. And if you have any questions about that, you can always ask me in the description below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Now you're wondering, well, if I want to do some of these setups, where do I get the gear? There's a couple places you can get it from. You can get it from operations. You can go get your tokens and switch it for whatever piece of gear you get. You can get it through doing PVP, you get your unassembled components which will be legacy bound soon and also your RNG crates your CXP crates um, that's why I always preached that you save the set bonus gear because you're gonna want to switch out things and it's gonna come in handy so if you want to do one of these setups and you're a tank but you want to get some of the DPS mods you can either craft them for yourself or look on the GTN or you can save up all your packs and then when you're about to pop and just simply switch over to DPS back, open them, you get DPS gear, and you can go from there. But like I said, if you want some more detailed device, just ask me about it, and I'll, I will tell you later. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the abilities you got going on here. One of the important ones I'm going to talk about first before I go into anything else is your guard. You should always, if you're running with a healer, make sure to guard the healer. If you're just solo queuing try to look for a healer in the group and if not just talk to your guard on somebody because you will get your medals quickly doing so and if you're running arenas especially ranked you're gonna have to guard swap because a team is gonna focus is generally not gonna focus a person that's guard so they're gonna focus somebody else so when you see that happening when you're watching your frame somebody's health is going down you're like oh crap let's switch guards and vice versa you can always switch it when needed and that's when your intercede comes into play as well because when you intercede as you can see the damage uh taken is reduced and they can just go from there okay i'm gonna talk about some of your abilities now you got your saber throw and your force charge which builds rage you got your assault which grants you defense your crushing blow which is an aoe and it can hit like a truck and you got your retaliation which is a damaging ability and also you got your force screen and you got your smash which is pretty cool because in this spec it reduces the targets accuracy you got your ravage you got your stun which is your back end I love using this ability on people and you got your vicious throw you want to use that whenever it is available because it is only available when the target is under 30% maximum health you got your taunt and you got your AOE taunt your threatening screen which also now grants your allies around you a, a wall to absorb a moderate amount of damage as Star Wars would put it. You also got your force push so when you leap in if you want to push somebody out and leap to them again it, you can. This is very important your disruption which is your interrupt I saved often for healers and you got your saber reflect which reflects damage backs and then that's when you say why are you hitting yourself why are you hitting yourself you got your CC break, your unleash, which we talked about. I use Vicious Slash as a filler. And you got your Intimidating Roar, which is your AoE stun. And whenever you do damage to a target, it will end it prematurely. And you got your big ability, your Saber Ward, which grants you ra may, uh, range and melee defense by 50% and absorbs 25% damage when this is uh, going. Your Mad Dash, which can get you in or out of sticky situations, depending on what you want to do. You got your Rage Defense. Stacks up to 12 times. You gain health back. I use Force Choke mostly for interrupts on a healer, or if a DPS is really pestering the healer, then I will use it on them. You got your Rage, which immediately grants you 
6 rage. And this is your big invisible. When you pop it, all damage is reduced by 40% for 15 seconds. Which is pretty important. And you got your Endure Pain, which increases your maximum health by 30% for 20 seconds. Now, if you want to still use a Chilling Screen for AoE damage, that's totally up to you. With the hit that it's taken, I really don't bother using it anymore. So, I'm just going to show you guys really quick when I hit this dummy what passes I get with my ability so you guys can see what's going on here. Assault. You get quite a few uh, things going here. You get your defense going. Crushing blow hits like a truck. You got retaliation. Defense chance increased. I'm just going to pop my enrage here. Four screen. You get absorb damage smash melee and accuracy decreased so as you can see with all the abilities that you use you're getting some sort of defensive buff to yourself and also really hurts the targets as well I really do love backhand so there really is no set rotation when it comes to PvP I just kind of look what's going on in front of me most of the time when you're running into a situation, if you have at least three or four other enemies around you, I pretty much uh, saber throw, force charge, and then I'll do threatening scream just to immediately give my allies that protection. So, you know, if I was going into, let's say, a normal war zone, i do something like that we we're just talking about, threatening scream, then I pop my enrage, and I do crushing blow smash and then if people are hitting me I will top, uh, pop my reflect and just go from there and then I will be looking for the healer in the meantime and I would mark them and be like hey this person's a healer and then I would try to harass him a little bit and then I would look for whatever I think is the biggest threat DPS wise and I would throw out a taunt at them and if they're getting on my healers nerves while I'm doing all this I can simply do my intimidating roar to stun or I can do my just want to show you if I you know, already use force charge I can use my force push and our force charge is ready to go again so we can force charge at them taunt them and slap them in the face so there is quite a few options here when it comes to PV uh, P immortal and if for some reason I'm in a 1v1 situation I will definitely make sure to use my disruption and my force choke because those are pretty much your interrupts and if you got your force push if you need to like kind of reset the fight and you got your invisible and you got your saber ward ready so you got quite a few things ready for you and if you spec the other way like my guardian tank is where I switched out all the enhancements for crit enhancements and mods for DPS mods you're gonna hit like a truck and people will not expect it and you still have some pretty good mitigation going on so I think that's about everything I wanted to cover. Like I said, when it comes to using your abilities, just depending on the situation, you just kind of want to judge what's going on and use what abilities are pro appropriate. If you got a bunch of people around you, when you jump into any situation, open up with your crushing blow, smash, threatening scream, make sure to look for the target you think is the most threat uh, threatening, taunt them, have your healer guarded, and if somebody else is taking a lot of damage, just simply switch your guard and keep an eye on the operation frame. I know it might seem like a lot at first, but once you get used to it, it'll be second nature. And when I go into ranked or anything like that, or a 4v4 situation, I make sure my guard is on my main bar somewhere so I can get that bitch going and try to save whoever I can. So I know there's kind of a lot in this video that I covered, especially like the gearing section. So like I said, if you have any questions whatsoever, just feel free to let me know and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So for today, that's the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed already, do so and then hit that like button immediately after. I will see you guys in the next video.